Hello, I'm Danny Hogger, and this is my action research presentation for San Diego Christian College in partial fulfillment of my Master's of Arts in Teaching degree. And today I'm talking about my action research, the effect of podcast review lessons on high school history students. My research question was, does listening to a podcast review session affect the scores on assessments on the following class period? Do students feel that this podcast review is worthwhile? Is the invested energy worthwhile in continuing to produce the podcast moving forward as a means of review for assessment for my high school juniors? The problem I found is that students were complaining frequently about homework. They're overloaded, stressed, and have anxiety about all the assignments that they have, and it's creating an imbalance in their life. Student burnout, as I found in my literature review, creates disinterest in the classroom and fatigue. The effects of homework exacerbate the effects of procrastination and turn them into prolonged habits. And when students' energy levels are depleted, confidence plummets. All of these things create a negative environment in the school community, in the classroom, and towards school in general, and that's something I wanted to explore and see if I could help diminish and bring students back to a place of homeostasis or of a more healthy routine where they could have a more positive attitude towards school. The source of my concern was seeing students frustrated, telling me that they've had few hours of sleep, and explaining to me that they are just so stressed out for all the things they have to do. Many of my students also have a job or a relationship and have family obligations, and that creates an imbalance that is just not healthy for them at this age level. With numerous tools expanding for collaboration and education among students, a vetting process could help with efficiency and adaptation of proper learning tools that will benefit students. So the intervention I designed was to put a review podcast available for students that they could listen to that had a recap of all the lessons, the learning targets, the objectives, and quizzes available for the following class to help them prepare. And the podcast was a way of listening to the key components of the lecture one more time before an assessment in hopes that that would help retention and also just help them feel comfortable going into the exam. In chapter one of the research, I was looking at who I am as a teacher. It's my fifth year teaching, my first year in high school, and I'm teaching social studies in a general education classroom, and I completed this research at Heritage High School in Brentwood, California. I listed the standards according to the California Department of Education for United States History, and I have 90 junior students who are all high school students, and my normal everyday course of the lesson was not interrupted. So the normal constant was the way that I teach. That would include activities, lessons, lectures, a little bit of textbook reading, some primary source evaluations, and the scores, assessments, and energy levels would be reported by students. So I would have three points of data, the scores, their feedback, as well as how they would perform in class during the lecture with all the activities and any in-class um, work that would be done for that day. So the next step of my research was to conduct a literature review. Podcasting has only been around for about 15 years and only widely used for about a decade since the invention of the Apple iPod, a device that allowed people to listen to these downloadable episodes anywhere on the go. And so some of the research that has been the most helpful has been about the environment of the school in terms of how teachers and students respond to extracurricular activities or flipped classrooms. And all of that seemed to come down to the theme of how schools emphasize the importance of learning in their environment. How much does the school foster the desire to learn, the desire to go the extra mile, for teachers to create additional resources and for students to seek them out and to try to be successful because the school embraces a school setting of success and goals. So if a school reinforces values, morals, or goal setting, students are likely to follow the lead of administration and faculty. Students who watch more podcasts had higher scores on average and a significant increase in grades for a majority of students. So there was this correlation to success in all the early research that I found. The most comprehensive study was done in 2012 following 52 classroom environments that all imposed a podcast in many different subject areas to see if they could get an increase in student performance on assessments. And what they found was, in the majority of cases, scores did increase. The control over learning is increased for students. Reviewing for tests and exams was the number one reason that was reported as the main value of listening to educational or watching educational podcasts. In addition, some of the other benefits were about missing school and catching up on lessons that were not seen during an absence. Some of the other reasons also included students felt like they didn't grasp information on the first go. So being able to see one more time the second or third or fourth steps of math equations, the podcast was helpful for being able to pause, be available on demand, and be in control of their learning. Science listed similar results with chemistry and physics. 
What's really important in this kind of research is for students to be able to supply freeform feedback. They're going to have a lot of different identifications as to their personal responses to the podcast. How do they feel about it? Did they think it was beneficial to their learning? So I created a form and placed in my appendix in my research a survey for each step in the research process for students to be able to give their feedback and how they felt about that. So when I collected the results, I had two tests in which there was no podcast available for review, and I had two podcasts where there were podcasts available and they were assigned as homework to go and listen to less than 10 minutes of audio to help them review for the assessment on the following class. I collected all the scores and I compared. Average test scores were taken from the group. No individual data was utilized. The triangulation of my research has motivated me to look at energy level with the investment of time looking at these podcasts, the scores that would be given, the feedback from students, and observing their assessment scores as well as their performance in class to see if the overall chemistry of the classroom is working at a high efficient level. In chapter four, I analyzed the results and students performed with an improved average score of more than 6%. That felt really great to see. It encouraged me because I thought that it was the case that there was a positive correlation, but if it was only a couple of percent, maybe 3%, I'm not sure I would have really felt conclusive about the results. But when I analyzed both tests for 90 students compared to the two tests where there was no podcast, it was over a 6% average increase. The podcast, according to one survey, give me a second chance at understanding material and filling out for notes that I might have missed in class, according to my student. Another survey mentioned that you speak quickly. This might be evident in the video right now. And some Sometimes I miss things while I am writing, so the podcast give me a chance to write and pause as necessary. Here is a chart of that data when I compiled all four class scores. On January 25th, 85% was the average score in the class, and when I gave the first podcast with notes for review on the next assessment, that average score improved to 91%. And I kept all the teaching methods as constant as I could, and while there will always be some variation and flexibility with the materials in a social studies classroom, i.e. no one chapter is equal to the next, it was interesting and positive and encouraging to see that score. But would it be repeated? And indeed it was. The next time we had no podcast available, the score remained right in the middle of a B range, 86.7%. And when we introduced another podcast for a review, that score increased to 93%. I felt really positive because we had proven now two times that when students had a podcast for review, they placed at a higher a grade level and they felt more confident about their scores and responses. In chapter five, we see that the average score without the podcast was 85%, which I still felt pretty good about. That informed me that I was doing a pretty good job in instruction where students were testing at a comprehensive level and were understanding the material, but clearly, when a podcast is available, they performed better as juniors in United States history class responding to that test. These audio and video files can be downloaded to portable players to take anywhere. And I mentioned that in my abstract because students are on the go. They're driving, they're in traffic, they're working, sporting events, trainings and games and performances. And time is a luxury these days with students who are trying to get into college and compete on many different levels. That was the focus of my research and I was really proud of the results. The faith integration I took from Matthew chapter 25, verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Wanting to give my talents and abilities to become a better teacher is a significant motivating factor in this research. We can enhance the world around us if we listen for the opportunity to do so. The results were deeper learning, enhanced learning, and serving as the glue for my students. This is the one missing piece that helps students perform at A level that didn't feel as confident after leaving my lecture that they could get an A on assessments. And in turn, they all felt that it was a very positive process. My references are available in my action research, and it has been an absolute pleasure to conduct this, to learn that my research methods and my extra inclination to do something for my students was actually beneficial and not just lip service to myself to tell other teachers that I'm doing this podcast and isn't this wonderful, but to be able to show now that based on the methods, the literature review, there are increases that have been correlated to test scores and podcast listening. And I have my own personal example now that my students benefited from this effort in my classroom and my instructional notes to look ahead and find proven methods of improving their performance. I'm Danny Hogger for San Diego Christian College. Thank you so much for watching. It was my pleasure to present this to you and thank you very much. So just as my research is an example of how I want to keep learning, I try doing this in front of a green screen in my classroom. It's something I would like to incorporate in future research and something I would like to do to make the podcast even more interactive and productive for everybody. I want to take a minute and thank some people who've helped me with this research. They're mentioned in my acknowledgments page. Professor Curran Smith, thank you for your guidance, for 
for your encouragement, for your motivation through this process. Professor Stacy Harrell and Dr. Loria Gu, you've also been instrumental through the San Diego Christian College process of helping guide me. I want to thank Rachel McNear from Emerge Education because she has helped give me feedback and bounce ideas off of throughout this processing and documentation of the year. And I want to thank my parents, Bill and Sandra, for supporting my ambitions as well as my wife and my daughter, Dana. This is to show you guys that we can accomplish anything that we want and for all my students to never give up on their dreams. Thank you so much for watching.